my god no you're so dirty i just had my hair cut and dyed literally yesterday i haven't washed it yet so you know it's in that weird just done phase I'm in that phase right now. I also have a little bit of dye staining, so I'm sorry if you can see that. I know I'm a hypocrite, I'm meant to be not drinking coffee, but to be honest, once a week, it's gotta be done. Welcome to the second episode of Beloved, my new favorite series where I take you through a very concise, hopefully, <laughs> review of what I've been loving this month. Um, right, shout out to Michelle, she does my hair. There'll be a link in the description if you're looking for a Marlebone based, uh, amazing hairstylist. Let us get started. January was a weird, very long month. Very, very long. So let's talk skincare. There is one brand that has two products this month that have just made my life better. The first is one I've been using for a couple of months. This is the Ren Clean Screen Mineral SPF 30. Do you know how hard it was to find a mineral SPF that was also cruelty free that also didn't break the bank until this came out? I can't even tell you, the hunt was long. I've been sent many a really good mineral SPF. Most of them were over 30 quid and that is a lot of money to spend on an SPF. So when Ren came out with this a couple of months ago, I was buzzing. They call it a mattifying face sunscreen. I wouldn't say it was mattifying. Um, it does leave a slight white cast at the beginning. That's the nature of mineral SPFs, but as you might know, mineral SPF is so much better for the environment than chemical SPF. So the trade-off of leaving a bit of a white cast for a while, I can accept that in order to not harm the coral reefs and the oceans. Also, full transparency, I went to an event with Ren this month where they took us to the Hoxton in Southwark and we had a sober vegan meal, it was delicious. But they also talked about their new skincare launch, which is this like um, face wash, good words, a really nice like, oil balmy face wash. But they were also talking a lot about their mission to become, I believe, zero waste by 2020? 2021, let me check that. I've just checked, they've pledged to go zero waste by 2021, which is incredible. They are pioneering the zero waste in beauty initiative, which is amazing. And we were listening to the, to the CEO talk all about all the changes they're making. For example, this packaging, these gray, um, what's the word, lids are, not the most aesthetically pleasing, but they you are able to reuse and recycle them much, much more efficiently than clear plastic ones. But they have now formulated or like pioneered alongside some technology companies a way of making clear plastic that is reusable and recyclable. I think up to 15 times or something, whereas normal clear plastic can't be recycled at all. This could all be wrong, <laughs> but they talk to us so much about all the initiatives they're doing and it honestly is so inspiring, so amazing. And on top of that, mineral SPF that doesn't break the bank. I'm just so, so about it. <laughs> on a personal note, I used this all through our skiing trip this January. We went to Teen in France and um, it was great. I didn't get sunburned and my boyfriend was using this as well. He was skiing for way longer than I was. He was out there like five hours a day minimum and he didn't get burned either. So it works guys. <laughs> You would hope it works if it's on the shelves, but it really does. So when I went to that event with Ren, they gave me a goodie bag with a couple of new products. And they also included this V-Sense Revitalizing Night Cream. So I've revamped my skincare routine the past couple of months. It's making such a difference. I think I've got a video coming out on that very soon. Um, I was missing kind of a night cream. I realized that I had a really nice moisturizer in there from, I can't remember the name of the brand, but I have a really lovely moisturizer from them. I will link it below. It's got like probiotics, hyaluronic acid, everything. However, it feels like more of a day cream and I really wanted something more nourishing to like complement it. So this arriving in my life, amazing. Thank you, Ren. And as per, I'm sure I've mentioned this 101 times, but everything will be linked in the description and probably as well in my top comment that I'll pin to the comments. Also, if you're new around here and you're enjoying this video, please hit subscribe because I would love to have you in our little family of fun and games. Those are good words. Let's move on to hair care. I've noticed in my videos recently, my hair's been looking a little bit flat. I struggle in a way because my hair is like a horse's mane. Like I love it, don't get me wrong, but it's very, very thick and very, very heavy. And so it kind of hangs off my head. It gets very greasy very fast, as you know, if you've seen any of my videos before. Anyway, rediscovered this way dry texture foam. I ran out of the spray a month or so ago and I thought, you know what, I'll give this a try. I'll leave it in the bathroom when I'm getting ready. And actually really, really enjoying it. It adds just the right amount of lightweight texture without having that spray, like the hairspray, like sticky, not even sticky, just the, crunchiness of hairspray. So I'd really recommend this actually. I think it's really good. Also you get bang for your buck, it lasts quite a while. Yeah, super cool, would recommend. I'm actually gonna mention a fragrance here as well. 
I don't remember if I mentioned this in my last beloved, but um, if I didn't, this is Doson. This is uh, probably not how you pronounce it. It's by Diptyque. It's the fragrance that I wear pretty much every day. I used to have a little rollerball of it, and then they kindly sent this through because Diptyque are amazing. So thanks, guys. But oh, if you wonder what I smell like, oh, it's this. It's like very floral. Like I'm a, I'm a florally, floral fruity girl generally, and then a bit sweeter and muskier in the evenings. That's how I tend to go. You know when you say someone's got like a lot of beans? I've got a lot of beans in me today. So now let's go on to makeup. I was kindly given a couple of the Victoria Beckham Beauty products to try earlier this month. And the ones that really stood out to me that I think you'll also be quite excited by are the Lip Definer Crayon and the, I don't actually know what this is even called, the Bitten Lip Tint. So this, this guy is mainly the standout. I won't lie to you. Nude lip liners, you can get them, I can't remember the phrase, two for a dozen? I don't know, you can definitely find them a lot of places and they're often at quite a high standard. I do think even in terms of like the high street, there's still so many good options for nude lip liners. This one is just basically my lip color and that completely sold it to me. It's number two, I have quite dark lips and so it's perfect for slight overlining, which I tend to do just because I like it. I don't need to justify why I overline my lips. I've got into this really bad habit of justifying uh, what I do in my life on the internet because I used to get quite a lot of feedback <laughs> on everything from what someone called, I think Sophie Milner referred to the other day as the perfectionist police, but that is basically, basically how I feel about, I don't know, just every so often there are commenters that are a bit weird, but there's no need for me to justify why I slightly overline my lips. I live my life, you live yours. I've made a whole bunch of videos about cruelty-free products and there's so much on my blog. I'll link both below. So let's get onto this. This is the Bitten Lip Tint by Victoria Beckham Beauty. I don't know about you, but I'm well into like a bold lip. I love a really like standout lip, even just in the overlining thing that I talked about earlier. I do like my lips to be done and look done. However, there are some days I just love the like real like bitten lip thing. I love it to look really natural and really not too done. Like there are days where I want that, but I really struggle to find the products that will enable me to do it without just putting on a whole load of lipstick. I think this might be the answer to my problems. So as you open it, I'll show you this in a cutaway, but it comes out and it looks like this kind of Mac Diva color. If you remember Mac Diva, that is a throwback. <laughs> But it's not actually this deep purple. When you put it on the side of your hand, it is way more of like a a burned coral. No, that's a really bad description. Like a rose, like a burned rose color. And you can blend it out and it just kind of adds a really sheer stain to your lip. I am so sold on it. It is my perfect every day. You can just pop it on. It doesn't move too much when you add lip balm either. Really reliable. Um, I don't know about you, but in winter, my lips are the Sahara Desert. So it doesn't disturb them too much either on that front, doesn't make them any drier. Yeah, I think it's lovely. And I'd also like to add the packaging is gorgeous. It is really heavy and like luxurious. It's got this tortoiseshell kind of going around on the like, I assume it's glass. Um, it's just so lovely. We've done all the beauty products, let's move on to clothing. So first of all, major shout out to Uniqlo Heat Tech and their leggings and their kind of under layer tops. I now have four of the tops and two pairs of leggings which I bought for skiing. They were immaculate, they did everything they needed to do. Super soft, super thin, so you can wear them under pretty much anything. So cosy and they also keep the heat in. Oh. Oh, I just love it when a brand is consistent. I think Uniqlo is an especially consistent clothing brand. As per, I would encourage you to buy sensibly and only buy what you need. Be thoughtful with your purchases. <laughs> I'm a big fan of Arquette and they are kind enough to put me on their mailing list. So I have the option of being sent um, an item of clothing or two every month. Often times I just ask for one or I decline, but I needed a fleece for the holiday. And so I went online, I was looking everywhere and then I went on Arquette and they actually had this amazing, oversized fleece. Oh, oh, I love it. I'll show you in a cutaway, but it's got this amazing um, like cut to it and um, it zips up all the way up here. It's very oversized. I think this is a size small and it is huge. <laughs> and it has this amazing stitching detail. Oh, I just love it. Zipper pockets, incredibly, incredibly good for traveling. I think I'm gonna wear this every time I travel in the future. It was way too big to go under my ski jacket but it was really good for when I was lounging about the house. 
I was kind of the chalet, in fact, I was chilling out, or I could layer it with another jumper or another fleece and pop out and go to meet everyone for apres. So yeah, big fan of this. I might just wear it for the rest of the thing because it's, look how cozy this is. Something I'd actually like your advice on. So while I was skiing, I realized I own no loungewear. I don't own a pair of tracksuit bottoms, fluffy leggings, anything of this kind of like chilling out loungewear, like athleisure thing. I'm not good at it. And I would really like one or two like kind of sets almost of loungewear so I can like chill hard and chill well. So if you know anywhere where I could get that sustainably, do let me know because I'd rather invest in a sustainable set than an unsustainable set. So if you know of any brands, please let me know because I need to chill harder. Oh, next is what I read. So I know I mentioned this last time, but I have finally very, very nearly finished becoming. I have about 12 pages left. I've got nothing left. This is Becoming. I feel like I've talked about this book all year. Do you want to know why? Because I've been reading it all year. I finally found time to actually get towards the end. Like I've got this much left and I love it. I genuinely think this is one of the best books I've ever read. Like in terms of it brought clarity and peace to my very frazzled brain. I'm having a bit of a life crisis as per and it made me realise you can go through so many stages of your life and you can be effective and be helpful and make change without having to constantly like I don't know campaign and stuff like you can still be in jobs that are meaningful and you have so many iterations of those jobs you don't have to stress when you're 24 like me I really loved it I also remembered so much of what she did in her in her first lady term so like first lady term is that what it's called I don't know but for example I really remember when she came to East London and she spoke to the girls um, at the East London College, I think, or school. I remember crying when I saw that on the news. It felt so moving to me and seeing her speech was so moving. And it turns out, as she says in the book, she was really moved by that experience as well. Um, yeah, there's so many more moments like that where I remember it happening and now being able to read about it afterwards is like equal ways like nostalgic and really warming, but also like quite like sad a lot of the time. She talks about Sandy Hook and stuff like that it's just awful it's been an amazing read i'm really happy with it i'll keep this book probably forever okay i've kind of messed up the order of this but let me tell you what i watched this month i really enjoyed bombshell bombshell is basically entirely set within fox news and it's all about sexual assault it has three amazing protagonists two of my favorite films in the whole world are the social network and the big short and if you like both of those you are going to really enjoy this film it kind of could have done more in places i feel but Overall, I really, really enjoyed the way they told that story. Now what I've listened to. So first of all, I want to talk about Circles by Mac Miller. Um, Mac Miller is like the first artist whose death really personally affected me. I feel very close to him because of a lot of his subject matter. And um, yeah, he's he was just really important to me and I was very upset when he died. So when I found out there was a, I don't actually know how to say this word, posthumous, <laughs> posthumous, I don't know. When I found out there was an album coming out after his passing, I was very happy because it seems like it was a really thought out process and that his whole family were behind it and that they really felt it was what he wanted. And I really, I like the album. I think it's a little bit eerie and a little bit bleak, but I also, I think a lot of it's like very easy listening which I quite like. I've only listened through it once so far. It's been quite, uh, again, like an emotion thing. Like I don't really feel like I can throw myself into it the same way I would normally. Um, but yeah, it's really good. And I'd really recommend you listen to it. Absolute favorite podcast over the past couple of weeks has been Popcast. I've listened to Popcast for two or three years now. Oh, it's just so good. It's my favorite podcast, but they've had some really good episodes this month, including one about TikTok and how TikTok's influencing the music industry. I am fascinated by TikTok. I'm on it every day. It's so good. <laughs> it's so clever. So yeah, Popcast has had an amazing one on TikTok. They've also covered the Grammys as of today. I listened to that. And they also did like a review of albums of the whole decade, I think. That was really good. Okay, there's two more albums I want to mention. This is always gonna be the largest section in this whole video. But the first is I've rediscovered the album Black Up by Shabazz Palaces. Oh my God, I listened to this on repeat when I was younger. I think I was like 18, 19. I listened to this all the time and I'd completely forgotten what a 
fucking amazing album it is. It's so good. If you're into experimental hip hop, if you like Tyler the Creator, you're probably gonna quite enjoy this. And then finally, an album that's really grown on me is Rare by Selena. I wasn't expecting this to be good and for me to like it. <laughs> But I was wrong. As far as I can tell, Selena's albums basically bring together the best writers, female writers specifically in pop. And there is a female writer on every song of this album and puts their best songs of the past year together and then Selena releases them. And this is no exception. There's a particular song that I love called, I think Somebody You Know. And it sounds like Tovlo wrote it, although I've checked the credits a hundred times. Tovlo doesn't seem to have written it and it's just so good. Okay, that's everything listening wise. Oh my God, this video is gonna go on forever. I'm so sorry. There's another book I'm halfway through reading that I'd like to mention because it is dry January for a lot of people. I'm currently reading The Unexpected Joy of Being Sober by Catherine Gray. I'm audiobooking it, audibling it. Audible sponsor me, please. And it's really good. It's the first sober book I've read that resonated with me quite a lot. Um, and resonates with my some of my experience. Um, Catherine was a full-blown alcoholic by the time she went sober. I don't necessarily resonate with that. Okay, my camera just cut out, but hopefully I can finish this video in time before my SD card is full. So what I was saying, sorry, was that it kind of feels like that video I made three years ago about my alcohol issues was like the only young woman speaking to a whole generation of people who also identified with that experience. And believe me, people still identify with that experience. I get messages every week talking about people's relationships with alcohol and what my video means to them. So it's really nice that there is a book out there that also I feel ha like in some way mirrors my own experience. Um, I find that really helpful and I hope other people would find it helpful as well. So if you are also interested in some sober literature, would really recommend Catherine Gray's book. Okay, let's talk about food. These little bars have been getting me through mornings lately. I don't have them every day. I have them when I'm at my, wake up at my boyfriend's house and I'm getting the bus back to mine. They are the Deliciously Ella Baked Oat Bars. This particular one, apple, raisin and cinnamon is, oh, just out of this world. I remember first biting into it and being like, holy crap, they've made a really good oat bar here. This is not what I was expecting. They also do a really great cacao, like it's just cocoa basically and something, I can't remember, but it's like chocolate flavor. I'll be the first to admit, I slated Deliciously Ella a lot when she first released her books, but it seems like her mindset has changed quite a lot. And I listen to her podcast sometimes as well because she talks about gut health and about general wellness. I find it really interesting. It seems like her perspective has matured as she has matured and she's got a baby now and she also makes really great products that are all gluten free. So thank you, Ella. We stand people who mature in their ideas. Next, I will be completely transparent. I haven't tried this flavor yet, but I am really into seltzers. I think that's what they're called. In America, they're everywhere. Um, they've got loads of different kinds. In the UK, we're only just getting into them which I feel like I've been waiting my whole life for everyone to get into these. They are um, flavored sparkling waters, but with the essence of thing. So they're not very sweet. They're often fruit flavored and they, they're they just like a really good alcohol alternative, first of all, and also a really good day drink just to like have as you're working. Um, this is the San Pellegrino Essenza range. They do a particular one that's Morello cherry and plum, I think. And that is delicious. That is genuinely one of the best ones. Also really loving the Aqua Libra um, cucumber and mint one. That is so good. And yeah, I've bought this one to try. This is the lemon and lemon zest, which to me reads as just lemon. They've also got like zero calories, zero anything, but they're more interesting than water and they kind of feel like a treat. And finally, what I've experienced <laughs> and like any kudos to like a particular thing or a product that wouldn't fit in this format. So as you know, because I haven't stopped talking about it this month, I went skiing, I went to teen. It was a really eye opening experience. And I do think it needs a shout out because it's by far the most I've been out of my comfort zone in maybe two or three years. It's really, really thrown me. <laughs> I won't lie to you, but in a very nice way, like I really feel ready for more growth in 2020. I think I've realized 2020 isn't necessarily like, oh my God, it's my year in the same way I was hoping, but it is my year in terms of I'm grabbing it by the fucking balls. I'm gonna learn a lot of new things. I'm gonna push myself. 
well out of my comfort zone because now I realize how rewarding it is. And I think I needed skiing as a reminder of that. Also in general, skiing was just so nice. Everyone we went with was amazing. Thanks guys. I don't think any of you will watch this because you're my real life friends. Fun fact, it is very weird for real life friends of yours to watch your videos. It makes them feel really weird. I totally understand. That was just a really nice experience, a really nice holiday. Thanks everyone. And then on that topic, one of the reasons it was lovely was because there was lots of sun. We have not had much sun this, like, winter. It's not been very sunny. But I started taking my vitamin D tablets again. I wasn't taking these at the end of 2019 and I regretted it. So I went and bought some more this week. Last week? Two weeks ago. Bought more, been having them. It's definitely helping. I really think everyone in the UK is vitamin D deficient and we should be taking these every day. Vitamin D, vitamin D. These are 90 tablets. You take one a day and it was what, like six pounds? I cannot recommend these enough. Honestly, if you suffer with low mood, if you feel low energy during winter, you probably need these. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Beloved. If you enjoyed it, please give it a like, subscribe, all of those good things. I'm gonna go and finish my coffee and work-ish. I need to leave my house more. Tell me to leave my house more. Also, let me know one of your beloved items of January in the comments or even do the whole like run. Let me know. Bye-bye folks. Love you lots.